Hey everyone, I wanted to make a video that answers the lab questions of the Aspirin Synthesis Lab. I tried to look them up on YouTube, but there wasn't, there wasn't any video that explains and answer all of the questions that I usually see and that they usually ask the students. So we're going to try to answer them simply and as simple as possible and a little fast. The first question says, can we use acidic acid instead of acidic anhydride? So here we have our reaction, which is salicylic acid reacting with acidic anhydride to form aspirin and acidic acid. They are asking us if we can use acidic acid instead of the acidic anhydride. It's possible. So your answer should be that it's possible we can use it. But the problem is that acidic anhydride is, is more active than acidic acid. If we look at the organic chemistry book by Paula, we can see here the reactivity of the, of the families. And as we can tell, acyl chloride is the most active. But acid anhydride is more active than carboxylic acid. Why? Because the pKa of the conjugate acid of the leaving group is lower than the acid anhydride. We also have a table here that shows the pKa's of the conjugate acid of the leaving groups. And as we can see here, it's 15.7 conjugate acid of the leaving group of the carboxylic acid, which is the conjugate acid of OH, which is the acid is water and it has pKa of 15.7. So if we want to if we want to know the pKa of the conjugate acid of the leaving group of the acid anhydride, it should be between the Acyl, chlor acyl chl chloride and carboxylic acid, so it should be around 3 to 5. So basically what you should say that acidic anhydride is more active than acidic acid. So we can use it, but we might get less for product. Okay, the second question is, why do we add cold water before it? the recrystallization. So it's basically asking us why do we add cold water after the first part of the reaction, after the reflux. So like after one hour of the reflux. And the answer is in this reaction, we add cold water to get rid of the excess acidic anhydride. So we were basically degrading it to two molecules of acidic acid. We can answer another question here is that why do we use cold water? What happens if we use hot water? So if we use hot water, we might, we might degrade our aspirin so it can go hydrolysis into salicylic acid. So we might get our initial reactant again, which is a side reaction that can happen, which will reduce the yield for aspirin. So that's why we use cold water for that. The third question is simple, is that what's the purpose of H3PO4, which serves as our catalyst? So it basically speeds up the reaction, so it stays the same. Like it gives proton, but it takes it back from another place. So in the, in, at the beginning of the reaction, it's H3PO4, and at the end, it's still H3PO4. It doesn't react with any of our reactants. Question four is, can we use acidic acid instead of H3PO4? Actually, we talked about it before in question number one, 
The answer is no, because of two reasons. Well, first, acetic acid is an organic acid, which means it's a weak acid. H3PO4, it's much stronger. So it's, it's a weaker acid. But the main reason is, is that it reacts with the aspirin, as we said in the answer of question one. And we said that the catalyst should not react with our reactants. So I would say that the answer here is no. We will answer question five and six together, which in my opinion are the most complicated. It's gonna be a little hard to explain, but I will try as much as I can. It asks us, can we use, so it's basically about the recrystallization solvent. In this reaction, we use ethanol, 15 milliliters of ethanol, and then we add 40 milliliters of water. And it's asking us, no, can we use ethanol alone instead of ethanol water in the recrystallization? And in question six, it's asking us, can we use water alone instead of ethanol water? in the recrystallization. And I prepared a very professional sketch here that might explain it. What you need to know is that both of, the, of these molecules, okay, first we should say that the main impurity is salicylic acid. Of course, we can get acetic acid as well, but the main impurity is salicylic acid. And this is our aspirin. And you need to know that mo both of them are poorly soluble in water, but both of them are soluble in ethanol. What, what you also need to know is that salicylic acid is slightly more soluble in water than aspirin. Why? Because it can form more hydrogen bonds with the water. As you can see here, we have an alcohol group and here we have an ester. So this molecule can form more hydrogen bonds with the water, so it's slightly more soluble. So if we use eth ethanol alone, remember in the recrystallization, first we heat, we heat up the solution and then we cool it down to form the crystals. And if we use ethanol alone, both of them will be soluble in heat, but we cool it down, both of them will still be soluble, so we will not get any crystals. I think. So it's not a good idea. And if we use water alone, it's the exact opposite. Because both of them are not soluble, are very poorly soluble in water, so it's not a good idea either. So the question that remains, which I find it complicated, is that why does salicylic acid stay soluble after we cool the solution down in this solvent mixture? I think there, there are two reasons for that. First one we already said is that salicylic acid is slightly more soluble in water, even though both of them are poorly soluble, but this molecule can form more hydrogen bonds with water. The second reason is more, is more important is that you shouldn't forget that the amount of your impurity, the red dots, is much less than your main product that you want to crystallize. So it's, it's easier for it to dissolve in this mixture because of its very little small amount. So that's, that's the main reason. What you also shouldn't forget is that very, very little of your aspirin might also dissolve in this solvent mixture. So in the recrystallization, you might also sacrifice a little of your aspirin of your product. So let's say we lost, we got rid of the three red dots the impurity, we might sacrifice one white dot of our main product, which is the aspirin. So that's that's what happens. Question number seven, why do we add the minimal amount of solvent in the recrystallization? 
Let's say we added way more than 15 milliliters of ethanol in our recrystallization. It's going to be much harder to recrystallize because we're basically we're basically like increasing the solubility. Well, not not really. We can't change the solub solubility. It's just if we add much more ethanol, we're making aspirin way harder to crystallize because the more solvent we add, the more, let's just say, the more, the easier it will dissolve. Let's just say that solubility is, is the same for this molecule. So we're just making it very hard to be insoluble in this solvent mixture. So we should use the minimal amount of our solvents here. The last question is the side reactions. We talked about one already, which is the hydrolysis of aspirin back to salicylic acid. So this is the first one. Another side reaction is that salicylic acid has an alcohol group and carboxylic acid. So the carboxylic acid can react with the alcohol group in another salicylic acid molecule to form a polymer and release water. So this is the second side reaction that would happen. Another reaction that could happen, but it's not that important because it still forms aspirin. So the third one that could happen is that this salicylic acid can react with acidic acid that forms in the reaction. What acidic acid is this? We can see it here in our reaction, this one. So the acetic acid can also react with the salicylic acid to form aspirin. So I don't think this, re this reaction will reduce the yield of aspirin because it produces aspirin. So this is the third reaction that could happen. Okay, so we, answer we answered all of our questions. I really hope you understand it. And if you have any questions, you can comment or message me. And you should know that I offer free organic chemistry help for students. And the info is in the description if you are interested in that. Good luck.